from Dr. Ronnie Kilda's 2015 book, Bright Light on Black Shadows, Chapter 18, Overview of Harassment Methods Used by Covert Community Recruits, COINTELPRO, Gladio, Covert Community Recruits, and Stay Behind Armies. As Chief Medical Officer for Northern Finland, Dr. Rauni Kilda was a political insider who was invited to many open and many secret international conferences. She was privy to top secret documents. Clearly, this manual for psychological warfare presents the methods by which security services surveil, punish, neutralize, and ultimately murder their designated civilian targets. This manual was evidently used in stay-behind army operations, including Operation Gladio, that were secretly staged in post-World War II Western Europe between 1950 and 1990 by British intelligence, MI6, CIA, and NATO in cooperation with local groups including mafias and the Masons. Many phrases and spellings in this document use the British form of the English language. This probably reflects the fact that it was written by British military intelligence operatives. If so, we may speculate that it was authored by an individual or group associated with the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations, which grew out of the Psychological Warfare Division of the British Army at the close of World War I and has for decades been the world's brainwashing center. The remarkable revelation here is that modern organized stalking operations are identical with, or nearly identical with, those used in the terror operations of Operation Gladio and the stay-behind armies of post-World War II Western Europe, as well as the operations conducted by the FBI in their top-secret COINTELPRO, or counterintelligence program, of the 1950s through the 1970s. It is worth noting that as of 2013, U.S. Special Operations Forces, in other words, the U.S. military, is engaged in similar destabilization and citizen elimination operations being carried out in the name of counterterrorism in approximately 134 of the world's 195 nations. See, the world is the battlefield U.S. SOCOM involved in 134 counterterrorism wars. Okay, the manual. General. Operations in general are of the active surveillance type. Passive surveillance is watching a target covertly to obtain information about the target. Active surveillance can include information gathering, but it also includes the agent making the target aware they are under surveillance. Beyond active surveillance, agents perform acts to keep the target uncomfortable around the clock. Although operations are silently approved of and covered for by the official justice system, they are not seen as criminal in nature by citizens who do not have a strong sense of right and wrong. Agents must take great care that each and every act of punishment is deniable. This means that should the target complain to police or any other officials or friends, neighbors, family members, or doctors, the nature of the punishment must be seen as the target's overactive imagination, or better yet, an indication of the target is mentally ill. The system has worked for years to recruit the medical establishment to help maintain deniability, and today most targets are immediately labeled as mentally ill and often forced onto antipsychotic medication when they complain. But their agents must still do their part skillfully to perform acts of punishment so that almost anyone the target complains to will deny the crime against the target has taken place. As an agent, you will be trained in how to do this. The system has been blessed with advanced technology, which enables heavy punishment at times the target is in their home silently, through walls, and this is very deniable. Agents must pass their initial training and demonstrate a high level of commitment to maintain community safety and the ability to operate deniably before they will be considered for advanced electronic punishment training. Electronic punishment training is beyond the scope of this manual. 
The organization is very fortunate in that we have been able to recruit top specialists to back up field operations people. Psychologists are the key to finding ways to maximize feelings of stress and hopelessness in the target and degrading the target's health from many individual minor invasive punishment acts. Technicians in all fields, telecommunications, electric power, building electrical and alarm systems, and utility employees in all fields use their positions to inflict many absolutely normal-looking problems on targets on an ongoing basis. And of course, the services of many skilled locksmiths are invaluable in this. As a community-based agent, CBA, you will have the privilege of working with a team capable of delivering better justice than the official system. Two, surveillance. Surveillance is the foundation of all operations. Both community-based agent, CBA, visual surveillance, and advanced electronic surveillance are used. This chapter will cover only local agent visual surveillance. Your local lead agent will schedule surveillance watches for each target in that community. Each target will have at least one CBA watching them at all times, even while at home and asleep. Each CBA surveillance team will be given a cell phone number for reporting target actions and movement to the local control center, CC. Actions to be reported include, but are not limited to, target turns lights on to start the day, target uses toilet or shower, target exits residence, target drives away, target arrives at work, or target shops or visits any other establishments or location. Target arrives home. Target eats meal at home or in restaurant. Target engages in sexual activity. Target turns lights off at the end of the day. Target turns lights on in the middle of the night. Target travels out of town. Some of these observations will be performed by the Electronic Core, EC, but CBAs should attempt to make and report as many detailed observations of target activity as possible. The reason such detail is necessary is that the punishment phase of active surveillance requires that supervisors customize each punishment action to match the personality of the target and the need to make each punishment action appear to be life's normal breaks. One important punishment function of surveillance is to sensitize the target. Targets are never told they are under surveillance or being punished. Instead, Close, active surveillance and other activities, happening far too frequently to be written off as life's normal breaks, will eventually cause the target to realize they are under surveillance and punishment. As a community-based agent, CBA, you will be given specific instructions on exactly when, where, and how to carry out punishment actions. As long as you carry out punishment instructions exactly as given, there is no way the target will be believed if they complain and you will not be exposed to risk of action by law enforcement. How well the punishment actions work depends on how accurate and complete your reports are in many situations. The control center acquires access to properties or apartments immediately next to the target's homes or apartments. Because EC, Electronic Core, has through-the-wall surveillance and punishment equipment, they will be reporting target activity along with community-based agents. In a typical setup, CBAs may be posted in a parked car where the target's home or apartment can be observed overnight, for example. In this setup, the CB in the car may be instructed to call using walkie-talkie style cell phones. Another CBA or team waiting or patrolling by car nearby to follow the target. Or you may be assigned to follow the target yourself you will receive instructions from your local center as to following the target. Targets in transit may be either covertly or visibly followed. When in doubt, hang back a bit and contact the center for instructions, as targets in transit can present many unanticipated situations. The center will always have the target's position monitored, so if a target gives the CBA the slip, it will assign other appropriate community-based agents to pick up the target at the earliest opportunity. Be sure to notify the control center immediately if you lose the target. When applying the visible following of a target, making the target uncomfortable because of your presence, 
you will be given instructions as to when to break off the following. Another CBA or CBA team may pick up the visible following, but once you have broken away, they advise that you are clear and ready for the next assignment. Number three, intercepts. Intercepts are where community-based agents, CBA, will appear to, quote, just coincidentally, unquote, cross paths on foot with the target. Once the target has been sensitized to the point of realizing they are under surveillance and punishment, they will recognize and be made appropriately uncomfortable by the simple act of multiple CBAs, quote, just happening to, unquote, cross paths with them. Your local control center will instruct you as to how you will be cued to perform an intercept. Often you will have an on-site supervisor, OSS, position you and give you hand signals as to when to start your movement to intercept the target. Because targets moving about aren't always totally predictable, the success of CBA intercepts depends heavily on the electronic core who have means of monitoring the exact whereabouts of every target and through computer programs, predict exactly when and where a target will be as they move about the community. Your local OSS has a special means of receiving instant silent instructions from the center. One, intercepting CBAs may be asked to perform one of the following forms of intercept. Two, simple path crossing requiring the target to take evasive action to avoid collision. Multiple CBAs sometimes perform this several times during a single outing by a target. On foot, walking for an extended period on the opposite side of the street from, walking, from a walking target. Three, arriving at a place known to be a favorite of the target and simply occupying that place just as the target is about to arrive. Restaurants, parks, public facility, seating, even bus seats are examples. Sometimes just hanging out in such a location at times and places where people don't ordinarily do that. Four, smoking, coin jingling, whistling, or toe tapping near the target at a location where the target is known to need to stand as to wait for the bus, or standing right behind a target at a water fountain. Five, a group as many as a dozen CBAs may be assigned to arrive at a store just ahead of a target and form a queue ahead of the target, spending time buying lottery tickets to delay the target. The target is very tired and eager to get home after work, for example, or in a hurry. Six, community-based agents may be assigned to leave a next-door home or apartment exactly the same time as the target repeatedly. Alternatively, a CBA may intercept the target a short way before home and arrive at exactly the same time as the target. While these may seem like trivial acts, keep in mind that the target will have these quote-unquote trivial things happen every single day, and repeated intercepts like these will force the target to always watch for such acts, essentially ensuring the target never quote, has a nice day, end quote. This is the goal, to ensure the target's punishment. Similar intercept operations are performed with vehicles. The center can schedule these every day the target commutes, and both to and from work. Vehicle intercepts are particularly effective when the target sees the same vehicle in an intercept convoy, both in the morning and in the evening. Because vehicle intercepts can be dangerous, CBA assigned to vehicle intercept duty must successfully complete a special training course prior to actual assignment. 